begins with breaking news. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Chandy Chapman. Tonight, the worst mass shooting in Pittsburgh since the Tree of Life Synagogue massacre back in 2018. Dozens of shots were fired at a packed party on the city's north side. Tonight, two people were dead, both under the age of 18. Well, a Pitt Karen woman who was driving for Uber found dead in Monroeville. Christy Spacuza was last seen Thursday. Her body was discovered yesterday. Her death prompting concern from other women who drive for the rideshare service. Neighbors heard the chaos, some describing it like a war zone. Many saw their cars and homes peppered with gunfire. We spoke with one neighbor who had just gotten home from a wedding and says the home where this happened wasn't necessarily known as a problem house in the neighborhood. Beauty salon boarded up after a car just slams into it. Haskins was just weeks away from his 25th birthday. We have team coverage tonight. Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson is accusing a Pennsylvania congressman of supplying fake elector documents during the 2020 election. But Jeff, everyone is just happy that the fireworks are actually back. We had the sun light up the sky in the daytime and now the fireworks will light up the sky at night, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Look at those hats. Wow. I'd love to wear one of those, especially for today when it's <laughs> raining. It'll help protect you. The bigger, the better, right? <laughs> Chandy, would you, Jeff? Well, I did a little research. You did? And apparently there is a ketchup battle between Heinz and French's and Canada. So that's where this comes okay. from. And since we're all Pittsburgh people, if Heinz makes a ketchup pop, I'll try it. But French's, it would have to be a mustard pop. So it, that's where I stand. It, I don't think anybody else took that much thought into this, but <laughs> you did the research. The first I'm thing that came to mind. In Illinois, lottery winners of more than $250,000 can choose not to reveal their name, so there's a chance we may never know the name of that winner. I know one thing. If you won that much money, I would know the name of the winner. <laughs> I think I'd have a new car in my driveway. I have that much faith in our friendship. Is that <laughs> This. That breaking news, a Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe versus Wade, the landmark decision that legalized abortion nationwide. Thanks for being with us tonight at 6. I'm Chandy Chapman. That's right, I'm live here at the Brookline Memorial Recreation Center, where any moment now, the vice president plans to speak at this podium behind me. Kamala Harris plans to talk about the president's infrastructure plan. And most of that snow fell while a lot of us were sleeping, people all over the area waking up to scenes like this. So have you ever seen a case like this with no charges being filed? Certainly not nine wounds and certainly not one case in which there were wounds through the back. That's right, quite the scene here at Shady Park Place. Several fire departments are trying to put this fire out, but let me step out of the way and show you exactly what's going on right now. Officials tell me everyone is out of the building, and at this point, there are no major injuries. Some people have been treated for smoke inhalation, but this is a serious situation because a lot of seniors live in this building on Lobinger Avenue. Some of them use oxygen tanks. Well, a short time ago, I talked to the president of the Pittsburgh Firefighters Union. Union. He was one of the people who helped rescue those people who fell more than 150 feet after that bridge collapsed. He tells me this is something that he has never seen before. But let's take a live look at what this looks like right now. You can see that emergency vehicles are still lined up and down the street right before the bridge collapsed. And you can see the yellow tape. That's where this is all happening. Just a dramatic scene here near South Braddock Avenue and Forbes Avenue near Frick Park. We know from police that Frick Park is now closed. Now, this bridge is known as the Fern Hollow Bridge. The collapse sent three people to the hospital. Officials say about three to four vehicles were involved in this collapse, including a Port Authority bus that had a driver and two passengers on board. We know in all about 10 people were hurt, but none of those injuries are life threatening. Now, the collapse happening was shocking, but that rescue was also dramatic. The people fell about 150 feet. A human chain was created to rescue those people. And to give you a perspective, this is a very busy area. We talked with neighbors who heard the collapse. They had no idea what was happening, and this is all coming at a time when President Joe Biden is in town to talk about his infrastructure plan. Well, I spoke with Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman. Here's what he had to say. 
This is a bridge that I, I quite literally just drove over yesterday. Okay. So right now we're doing kind of an interview at the same time. Jay Cost is going over there, but now I'm going to grab the president that I introduced before with Pittsburgh firefighters. Uh, let's tell, first of all, you were there. Tell us what the scene looked like on the ground level. The students came up with the idea for the safety robot. They made these prototypes, gave them to the company, and now their dream is a reality. Fire Chief Adam Lohr actually lives inside of this home with his wife and two year old. Luckily, they were not home when the tornado hit, but then the tornado went this way. You could see all the damage. There's actually 10 pieces inside of the trees, and then the tornado went next door, destroying a garage. And people aren't just looking at car prices. They're also looking at how a vehicle performs. While Peter Spencer's family is mourning, they're demanding answers from high ranking officials about what happened to their loved one after he was shot several times in Venango County. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 went looking for answers. We have no hatred, no malice, but we want justice. We want justice. 29 year old Peter Spencer's father wants answers on why his son was shot to death in Venango County in December. Officials say he was shot nine times. Now the family is holding on to memories of the man who they say was a natural leader and a chef. I still want my son, but it is impossible to get him back. So his name will live on. They say Spencer was a Jamaican immigrant seeking the American dream for himself and unborn child before his life was cut short. Officials say Spencer was found on Carl's Road in Rockland Township after spending time with a former co-worker and others. The state police's heritage affairs team is involved that looks into responding to hate or bias related crimes. The family is now demanding the Menango County District Attorney's Office turn the case over to the PA Attorney General's Office. Their attorney, Paul Juba, says they're also demanding the DA immediately turn over all forensic reports to him. And they want a 911 call possibly related to the death released. Forensic pathologist Dr. Cyril Wecht completed a second autopsy on the body. He had multiple gunshot wounds of his body, including some uh, that entered into his back and uh, toward the uh, backside of his neck. He's waiting to see the report from the first autopsy before releasing final findings. So have you ever seen a case like this with no charges being filed? Certainly not nine wounds and certainly not one case in which there were wounds through the back. We've made repeated requests to the Venango County District Attorney's Office for an update on Spencer's case, but have not gotten a response for weeks. At this time, no arrests have been made and no charges have been filed. Chandy Chapman, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Tika Hemingway perfects her boxing skills in this gym, but as a four-time national champion, what she does for others makes her a community champion. One punch at a time, Tika Hemingway is changing lives. The four-time national boxing champion has traveled the world with the Olympic U.S. team, trains with boxing great Roy Jones Jr., and has a permanent exhibit in the Heinz History Center. Her goal is to bring a world championship title back to Pittsburgh while empowering women and teenagers like 13-year-old Maylin Strayhorn. She made me, like, step out of my shell and everything and just um, made me feel more confident in myself and made me... Um, speak up more. Strayhorn is part of Pittsburgh Girls Box, Tika's free mentoring program for ages 13 One, to 60. Two, three, she takes time to teach box. people boxing skills. And even took a few minutes to show me some moves. One, two, one, two. <laughs> During the mentorship, women and girls learn life lessons too. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve, and uh, no matter what you're going through, still fight, still have the courage to go after your dreams boldly and confidently. It took courage for Tika to share her story for the first time publicly with Pittsburgh's Action News 4 on how boxing became her life path and how she turned tragedy into triumph. I was walking home and I was attacked by a grown man and he um, beat me up on a street corner 
and uh, he dragged me into an abandoned house and that's where he raped me for hours. Now I'm only 14 years old. I found out I'm pregnant from the man who uh, raped me. Uh, no one knew, so I had to drop out of high school because I was, getting, I was getting bullied. I started praying to God all night on the basement floor. My face was on the floor and I'm crying out to God, asking God to change my life all night. The next morning, um, I met a boxing trainer on the corner who uh, changed my life forever. Now the community champion is giving back with the boxing nickname, the Hope Dealer. When you look at me, essentially you see hope. I wanna, you know, inspire the world, you know, with these hands. Now Tika is part of a fundraiser on Thursday with Joey Porter, Ryan Shazier, and Jim Tressel that raises money for the Stowe Rock School District. Reporting in Overbrook, Chandy Chapman, Pittsburgh's Action News 4.